Shabbat Shalom. Hello. Oh, yes. Shabbat Shalom. Who? It's so strange. Much too late. Much too late. We're all so happy to be here, so we can celebrate by singing hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Today we mark Shabbat. We also mark Lag Ba'omer. And Lag Ba'omer is traditionally a celebratory day. But as we begin this Shabbat, we take a moment to reflect on the fragility of life. We think of those who died at Mount Meron last night as they were commemorating this significant day in Jewish history and in our Jewish text as well. We also pray for those who have been injured and we hope that they have a refuah shlema, a full renewal of both body and spirit. Day 33 of the Omer. 33. Good. The 33rd word of the Torah is good. After each act of speaking the universe into being, God paused and saw the good. Light is good. Darkness, good. Also the balance between the two. Every ge geographic feature, every seed, and spore and fern. The dinosaurs were good until they weren't. The great auk, the atlas bear, God must spend eternity reciting, I love. What comes and I love what goes. That every story has an ending must also be good, at least. We continue with the words of Dodili as we welcome Shabbat. Oh 
continue on page 138 in our Sidor, in our prayer book, as we sing L'Chadodi, we welcome the Sabbath bride. And so as we welcome the Sabbath bride, I invite those in our congregation to wave at each other uh, as we rise for the final verse. And if you are joining us online this evening, please uh, share where you are joining us from. Wish each other a Shabbat Shalom as we sing these words. Shabbat Shalom, wave to each other. Please be seated. 
As we get ready to kindle our Shabbat lights, it's my honor to invite up Howard and Sylvia Cohen to light our lights on page 121. And we always like to discuss how we brought light to the uh, world this week. Maybe something uh, beautiful lit up your world, a birthday, an anniversary, a new job, something big, something small. I'll start uh, at 5 o'clock uh, this uh, afternoon. We celebrated Lagba Omer outside in our tent. We probably had 130 people dropping by for ice cream and lawn games and Shabbat singing, which was really wonderful. You should have joined us for your free chip, which um, or Choco Taco, which is my favorite. Um, anything else that you want to add in the chat box or share with us? Anything good that happened to people this week? Uh, next month, my uh, my great niece will be having her first birthday. Oh, nice! Her first birthday. It's my granddaughter Emma's fifth birthday today. Awesome! Nice. As we speak. Granddaughter coming up from college. Wonderful. Oh my God. Yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> There you go. Uh, so we are going to light the candles and you'll read the bottom of. source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Bless all who enter this sanctuary in need, all who bring their offerings of their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love. Amen. things in our chat box. Heidi Ackerman shared that their daughters, Randy, is getting married this Sunday. Mazel Tov, Ed Lerner, and Marilyn say we visited their family in Florida. It's been a year and a half since they gathered. So, so wonderful that we are having some reunions lately as well. We continue our service on page 144 with the Hatsi Kaddish. It kadobi it kadashme raba Ve halema di brachi ruti Ve yom lech machuti Ve chayichon u v'yom echon U v'chayet chavit Yisrael Ba'akala, ba'akala U v'ismahan kahari It pa arvit roman bit na se, bit a dar bit a le, bit a la shemed kucha. Rechul le ela min kol bin chata veshirata, tush bechata bene.
Adonai, Elohinu Melech Elam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'arib Aravim, Bechokma Poteach Sha'arim, Uvi Una Meshane Itim, Umachalif et Hazmanim, Umesader et Hachokabim, Mishroteam Barakir Kirtsono, Bore Yom Belila, Boleal or Mipne Choshech, Bechoshech Mipne or Uma Abir Yom Uvein Lila, Uma Abdil Ben Yom Uvein Lila, Adonai Tefa Ochemo, El Chai Vikayam Tami Yimloch Alenu Leolam Vaed, Baruch Atadonai, Hamarib Arabi. Mitzrayim, 
להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. We continue on the middle of page 157. We read responsively. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. We declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and you. From bondage in Egypt, we were delivered. At Sinai, we bound ourselves to your way. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the day, for the nations will be one and at peace. Then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing the shores. love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will. Baruch atah Adonai, haporei sukkat shalom aleinu, v'al kol amo Yisrael, v'al Yerushalayim. Shameru Vene Israel Et Shabbat Et Shabbat La Sot Et Shabbat Let Israel. 
Take a moment for tefillah talev, the prayers of our hearts.
now take a moment to call to our hearts and minds those who are in need of healing. We turn to page 371 for the Misha Bera. We think of those ill from COVID-19, their families, their caregivers. And this week, we are thinking of those who died and the even greater number who were injured in yesterday's tragedy in Israel. Mishabera Chavotenu V'imotenu, Avraham Yitzhak V'yaakov, Sarah Rivka Rachel Velea, Hu Yevarech Et Acholim. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal those who are ill. If you are thinking of someone, I invite you to share their name uh, if you are watching from home in the chat box, and if you are here in the sanctuary, if you'd like to share their names out loud. As well, we remember from our congregational family, Gabby Kraft Buckman, Susan Klein, Summer Curter, Arlene Furman, Neil Silverman, Mason Rockmore, Martin Ostroff, Pearl Weitzman, Aaron Taylor, Perry Shellman, Sharon Neese, Rabbi Rob Nosenchuk, Andy Sukutris D'Oreo, Joyce Kagan, Ina Batvelvel Drayman, Kathy Murphy, Betsy Miller, Stephen Brundage, Betty Moore, Madison Mosher, Phyllis Brown, Stephen Wasser, Melissa Bayer, Anita Engel, David Lazar, <coughs> Amy Letterer Shapiro, Rosalie Elbaum, Stephen Anthony Sussex, Benjamin Kagan, Lori Wasserman, Rosalie Landau, Michael Shmuel, Rita Hooker, Sharon Chapau, David Mazel, Dodie Zenworth, Connor Galinas, Danielle Longano, Ari Brofman, Susan Diamond, Howard Rapfogel. May the Blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for their help to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send them a complete renewal of body and spirit and let us say, Amen. Amen.
we take a moment now to remind ourselves that Shabbat is a gift. And the reminder of that is the Kiddush cup. And so we rise now for the Kiddush on page 123. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hakamem Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kiddushan v'mitzvotav V'ratzavanu V'shabbat kocho V'ahava v'ratzon Ilchilanu Zikaron V'maase Many greetings for our Jewish holidays. We say Hag Sameach for Passover or Sukkot or Shavuot. We say Shana Tova for Rosh Hashanah, Gemar Chatima Tova for Yom Kippur. We say Shabbat Shalom, Good Shabbos for Shabbat. Yet tonight, on this holiday of Lag Baomer, there is no traditional greeting. Actually, there are no Lag Baomer cards. <laughs> there are no specific foods you eat. And for many of us tonight, we may have no idea what Lag Baomer is. <laughs> I don't think I knew what Lag Baomer was until I got into rabbinical school. Lag Baomer definitely is not on the radar screen of most Reformed Jews, diaspora Jews, and I would think would go unnoticed for many Israelis as well. Unfortunately, that is not the case this year, as we mourn those who have died, and we pray for healing for those injured in northern Israel. Tonight we mark Lag Baomer and we look at the origins and how the rituals have been shared, how they've been morphed, and how they've been disseminated over many cultures. First, a reminder. We are currently in the period of the Omer. It's actually discussed in this week's Torah portion that we'll be reading tomorrow. There's a 50-day countdown, or count up, from Passover to Shavuot. And its biblical times had agricultural roots. An Omer, an Omer was a sheaf of new barley and could not be eaten until an offering was made. 
Immediately after the first night of Passover, a period of counting was initiated when seven full Sabbaths or weeks were counted off. On the 50th day, a second offering of meal of new wheat was baked into 11 loaves and offered in the sanctuary as the, as the first fruits of the harvest. Over time, the agricultural connections diminished and the 50-day period became a way to mark the progression from the redemption from slavery to revelation at Mount Sinai. Interestingly, this period known as Sephirah counting also took on a tradition of mourning. Some very observant Jewish men don't shave during this period, and in some circles, weddings are not permitted. So now we get to Lag Baomer, the 33rd day of the counting period. The letter Lamed equals 30, and Gimel equals 3. So we get the equivalent of Lamed, Gimel, L, or G, and the acronym that represents this day. Of significance is that it is on this day that there is a suspension of mourning rites. The earliest explanation for the mourning goes back to a rabbinic legend, according to which a plague wiped out 24,000 of Rabbi Akiva's students during the Sefirah. Some say that the plague lifted on the 33rd day, and then, as a result, became a day of the scholar's holiday. My teacher, Rabbi Larry Hoffman, as well as Rabbi Appel's teacher, explains that the ritual of Lag Baomer was developed over time from different cultures. The idea of some months being inauspicious for marriages goes back to the Romans, who banned weddings during May and early June, roughly the Sifira period. Jews probably picked up the Roman custom and then centuries later wondered why. In the ninth century, the Gaon Natroni connected it to the Akiba legend and the plague. Lagba Omer would become a holiday break from that morning. It was not just Jews, however, who interrupted periods of mourning with a holiday break. Medieval Christians mourned Jesus' impending death throughout Lent, for instance, but observed a day of celebration in the middle of it. Other customs followed, lighting bonfires and playing with bows and arrows, for example. These two were not originally Jewish. They were May Day ceremonies that Jews adopted and applied to Jewish time. In the 16th century, Sephardic Jews in Israel began visiting the grave of Shimon bar Yochai, the second century sage, said to have written the Kabbalist book, the Zohar. Visiting the graves of saints was commonplace among non-Jews in the area as well. But again, the custom was reinterpreted with specifically Jewish meaning. Lag Baomer thus collected one custom after another, some of them originally Jewish, others not. All of the efforts to give meaning to a day that people observed but were not sure why. Normally, when we think of holidays as marking, normally we think of holidays marking specific historical events. First comes the event, and then the holiday, to remember them. July 4th, for example, to remember American independence, or Thanksgiving, to remember the pilgrims, or Passover, to recall the exodus from Egypt. But sometimes, holidays come first, and only afterward collect reasons for being. Lagba Omer is a good example. 
Vlad Omer acts as a magnet, not just for customs and mythic eth- explanations, but for channeling human aspiration at its best. <coughs> at our best, we remember those who have died, honoring them by visiting their graves. At our best, we gather to celebrate greatness and remind ourselves of what counts for greatness altogether not military mights or worldly achievements, but learning and loving Rabbi Akiva and Shimon Bar Yochai. And so tonight, we come here on Lag Omer to mark the holiday, to remember scholars who transformed our tradition. And tonight, we also say thank you and recognize those who are part of our legacy circle, of our synagogue. These members of Temple Emmanuel community have included Temple Emmanuel in their will or estate planning. And like Lag Omer, the holiday has developed over time with added traditions. Our legacy members have made sure that our synagogue will be able to transform for the future. We're not sure what our Temple Emmanuel community will look like in 50 or 100 years. Yet we know, with the support of these legacy members, it will continue to be a vibrant and spiritual home for so many. I've always loved the famous and familiar story of Honey the Circle Maker, who one day, while walking down the streets, noticed an old man planting a carob tree knowing that it took 70 years for the tree to bear fruit, he chided the man, why would you plant a tree from which you will never eat? The man smiled and replied with confidence, my ancestors planted trees for me, so I will plant them for my grandchildren. The holiday of Lag Omer has transformed because of the people, the culture, in the times of our lives. Our synagogue will be able to transform because of the people who have planted the seeds, who will leave a legacy, who have brought so much beauty to our community for the years to come. And so it's my honor to invite Bob Coppell, chair of our Legacy Circle Committee, to share a few words. Thank you, Rabbi President, and thank you for those beautiful words. First of all, I want to thank all of the Temple members who have included Temple Emmanuel in their estate plans. Being a member of the Temple Emmanuel Legacy Circle identifies you as a dedicated and significant supporter of our temple. Thank you all. Additionally, I want to especially thank Jackie Master, our Temple Office Manager, who has provided the Legacy Circle with incredible support throughout the years. I also want to welcome and acknowledge the help we've received from our new Executive Director, Jason Silberfein, just in the short time that he's been with the Temple. Thanks, too, to Lori Zinberg, Executive Assistant, who arranged for the Shabbat gifts that I hope all of the Legacy members receive. I always think of three important fundamental aspects of financially supporting the temple by participating in the legacy circle. First, we all have a strong connection and commitment to Temple Emmanuel through our family life cycle events, participating in regular programs, and utilizing the wide range of educational schooling opportunities from ECE through high school and adult schools that are available to all, or by participating in Shabbat services like tonight's. We also know that our wonderful clergy, Cantor Novick, Rabbi Appel, Cantor Ott, and rabbinic intern, Becky J, who are led by our terrific senior rabbi, Rabbi Prosnick, along with our very dedicated staff, are always available to us when needed. Being a member of the Legacy Circle ensures that all of the people, programs, and services that the temple provides will continue to be in place 
long into the future. Second, including the temple in our planned giving is the most democratic of fundraising. People and families of all resource levels can make a bequest or a beneficiary gift that will help keep the temple on a sustainable course. This pathway is open to everyone, regardless of their means. Finally, I'm reminded of a passage in Isaiah. And all your children shall be taught of the eternal and great shall be the peace of your children. That text talks about how to achieve peace in our world, something we certainly need now. Further, the Talmud interprets that line as, it is by building now that we create peace for future generations. Once again, Toda Raba, thank you to all of our current Legacy Circle members. And if anybody would like more information as to how to participate, please contact Jackie Master in our temple office or contact me. May we all create peace for our future generations. Thank you. For sharing this committee um, and your support of our synagogue. In the chat box, we just put a list of those who are our Temple Legacy uh, members, as well as if you are joining us in the sanctuary, there was a list as you came into uh, our sanctuary this evening. And I would like to uh, offer a blessing. God spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel from every person who is moved by generosity of the heart, accept gifts for me. We celebrate the legacy of those moved by generous, generosity and free will to build and establish our very first holy communal structure, the Mishkan. They gave of gold, silver, and copper, purple and crimson yarns, fine woods, and items from near and far. Today, you volunteer your time and resources to create the community we cherish. We call you the Divim, those who are generous. We, call, we know you as Nevidim, those who are kind. We look to you, Nedivim, those who volunteer. We respect you, Nedive Amo, those who are leaders among our people. And we offer thanks to you, our legacy members who sustain us, just as you give thanks to God, declaring, with a generous gift, I make an offering to you, O God, I give thanks to your name. Baruch Atah Adonai, Notein Tomarim Nedivim. Blessed is God, giver of generous givers. Together we say, Amen. Amen. As we welcomed uh, Shabbat this evening, we moved from the 33rd to the 34th day of the Omer. And so we count the Omer tonight on page 570 of our prayer books as a reminder that we live in Jewish time. Um, and the culmination of this period is the giving of the Ten Commandments, which we celebrate on Shavuot. Please rise. Hineni muchan unzuman. I am ready to fulfill the mitzvah of counting the Omer. Together we say the blessing, Baruch Ata Adonai, Elohenu Melech Olam, Asher Kiddushanu Vamitzvotav Vitzivanu Al Sfirat Omer. Hayom Arbaa Vishloshim Yom Shehem Arba Shavuot Vishisha Yamim La Omer. Today is the 34th day of the Omer, which is four weeks and six days of the Omer. We continue our worship when, on page 586 with Aleinu. <laughs> Let 
the sun, O God, over all humanity, cause light to go forth over all the lands between the seas, and light up the universe with the joy, of wholeness, of freedom, and of peace. The Nemar, the Hayadunai, the Melech al-Kol Haaretz, Bayom Ha'u, Bayom This evening, before we join together in the words of the Mourner's Kaddish, I invite Corey Ackerman to uh, share a few words with us tonight uh, on the occasion of his mother's your sight. Okay. Okay. Um, when offered the opportunity to share a brief memory to honor a loved one whose yard site is this week, I wanted to share a memory of my mother, Peggy Ackerman, and I decided to select a memory that involved Temple Emmanuel. Some of you may remember her as a kindergarten, first grade, or third grade teacher at Temple Emmanuel Sunday School for 25 years, starting when she was pregnant with me and finishing when she had my, older sis my oldest sister, Faith's youngest daughter, as her student, her granddaughter. I was told that I was often in a crib in the classroom when I was a baby. She actually left Sunday school teaching so she could take a full-time job in the Cranford Public School as a teacher of students that were neurologically impaired. But she felt, quote, out of touch, as she put it, and joined this, the Temple Emanuel School Committee. Peggy knew that getting the best education was very important, and all four of her children had been educated at Temple Emanuel. But in her own words, her religious education was limited to rote learning of Hebrew prayers and her knowledge of holidays and histories was limited to the primary curriculum that she taught. So she joined the adult bar and bat mitzvah class at Temple Emmanuel, which I think was taught by Rabbi Disick, Mark Disick at the time. I remember helping her learn Hebrew at home in the evenings and going to see her become a bat mitzvah in the Brody Chapel. After the service, I got Mike Kenny's help uh, so I'd be able to get a priceless photo of her reading the, from the Torah with Yad in hand. And next to her, my Orthodox raised father in his talus, watching and smiling proudly. After my mom passed, I located a few of her writing assignments from the class, including one about her Jewish family upbringing, another one writing about her idea of the ideal Jewish family, and a final one explaining the reason why she wanted to become a bat mitzvah. The timeline I presented earlier was from that paper I found, and I wanted to share her final comments from that paper. I hope to broaden my education in Jewish history and tradition and learn to read Hebrew fluently enough to follow the prayer book. I've contemplated enrolling in a bat, or a bat mitzvah class for the past four years. Finally, with the urging from my husband and children, I decided to enroll. Since I was the only one in my family who had not had a bar or bat mitzvah, I thought it would be nice to quote, make it unanimous, unquote. And she finishes uh, with being uh, saying that her only concern was about the uh, quantity of homework that they had the past week. So I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, for letting me uh, share this memory of my mom, Peggy Ackerman. Thanks. 
Hymns. A very special woman. We think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, and we recall those who have died in the past 30 days. Paul Harris, Joshua Goldberg, son of Marilyn and Lawrence Goldberg, Allison Tischler, daughter of Beth and Warren Tischler, Bob Jaffe, father of Ricky Newman, Alan Levitt, father of Zach Levitt, Jack Malkin, father of Lori Pater, Adam Colton, son of Carol and Chet Colton, Manfred Rosenthal, grandfather of Allison Ehrlichman, as well as those who died at this season in years past and whose yurt sites we observe this week. Peggy Ackerman, J. Benjamin Albert, David Barkan, Saul Beller, Harold Chenvin, Nathan Siplett, Esther Cora, Edward Crown, Saul Davidson, Velvel Draymond, Leonard Epstein, Herbert Gourmets, Alan Gold, Dorothy Gollish, Stuart Gruskin, Saul Gurman, Jerome Herbert, Erwin Holzman, Abraham Horowitz, Betty Jacobs, David Cavacow, Paul Keat, Miriam Curter, Francis Lerner, Irene Satz Levine, Harriet Levy, Jerome Linder, J. Cohen Loeb, Kerry Mann, Gloria Margos, Dina Miner, Mildred Bobby Mencher, Pauline Milgram, May Minkoff, Sidney Novison, Murray E. Pilevsky, Lowell J. Pazer, Ina Pollock, Sidney Racklin, Irving Rader, Morton Rauch, William Redeker, Francis Chartoff, Michael Schumann, Saul Schwartzman, Eli Shubb, Lily Silman, Fred Spector, Philip Spurn, Boris Tabachnik, Rebecca Tannenbaum, Joseph Tannenbaum, Sylvan Unger, Harry Weiss, Harold Wester, Jack Yoselevich. And we take into our heart those whom we have drawn into our own circles. Zichronam Levracha. May their memories be for a blessing. We continue on page 598 with the words of the mourners Kaddish, and we please rise. Yit Gadal, Viet Gadal, Shemei Rabbah, Vialma de Bra Gurte, Vam Lif Malkute, Vachayachon of Yomechon, O Kaydoko Vait Israel, Vagala of Isman Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabbah, the Bra, Lelam, Ome, Omaya, Yit Barak, Vish Tabak, Vit Bar, Vitramam, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Hale, Vit Hala, Shemei Gatusha, Virifu. Leela min kol birchata v'shirata, tushbachata v'nechamata, da'amiran v'yalma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlema rabba min shamaya, v'chaim aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. Ose shalom v'mromav, hu ya'ase shalom, aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us and to all Israel, and let us say, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for joining us for this Shabbat. Thank you again to Bob Coppell, Jackie Master, uh, for all their work with the Legacy Circle. And thank you all to those who are a part of our circle. Uh, a couple of quick announcements before uh, we conclude with Adon Alam. Is that right? Um, we have the next couple of Shabbatot are extra special. We will be honoring our seniors and our teachers on uh, next week, uh, then our compromise the following week, and then a sisterhood Shabbat, uh, the third Shabbat in May. We hope that you will join us. We will be hopefully uh, having Shabbat services out in the tent um, in the future. Uh, we hope for good weather, um, but it's wonderful to have extra space for us to gather um, as well. Uh, be on the lookout for Shavuot information as we are more than halfway there in the Omer. Uh, we will be uh, celebrating Shavuot uh, uh, shortly, um, and we will be doing that with um, Nechama Karabach, Neshama Karabach and Menachem Creditor, as well as the Union County uh, Synagogue. So be on the lookout. That will be uh, uh, on Zoom with the Shavuot morning services uh, in our tent on that Monday. Any other? 
Well, tomorrow we have Holy Scrollers and the Minion. <laughs> Feel free to join us for that. And on Sunday, um, Becky J's uh, three-part series on racial allyship uh, at 9 o'clock, I think. Perfect. We conclude with Adon Alam, and thank you to Nick Tino for uh, being a part of our congregation this evening. Adon Alam, Hashem I did it, 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 I did I did it, 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 I to housing is for all New Jerseyites. Check it out Thursday. You can sign up at our e-blast. I did not find the world desolate when I entered it. And as my parents planted for me before I was born, so do I plant for those who will come after me. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>